talks about extensively, and I wanted to share this before we finish, in his Majmool Fatawa. And he says that there is a big comparison between the attitude of the believer and the mushrik when it comes to the dunya. The dunya for the believer and the dunya for the mushrik, or the dunya for the believer and the dunya for the munafiq. He says that there are many different parallels. He says, the muwahid, the person who believes in la ilaha illallah, he makes the dunya all for Allah. He knows that this now is a mazra'ah for the akhirah. It's an it's a, it's a agriculture for his status in the akhirah. And he displays all khushu' and concern to Allah. The mushrik and the munafik displays their khushu' and attention to other than Allah. Their focus in the dunya is not Allah. I think this is quite clear. But what this feeds is an inferiority complex within Muslims. Muslims feel that they have to compromise their identity because other people are seeking, are seeking the dunya and chasing the dunya. Just because I'm not chasing the dunya or seeking the dunya, there's something wrong with me. And this is a big problem. And this is why people, they change the way they act, the way they think about Islam. You don't have a problem. If you don't want the dunya, that is not a problem. It's not the way of the believer to want the dunya anyway. Our Qibla is one. And it is for the sake of Allah. We all face the Kaaba, not because we are worshiping the Kaaba, but to unify in our Tawheed, all of us, when we face the Kaaba, and when we do Tawaf around the Kaaba, we are affirming that there is no God but Allah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. La ilaha illallah. And that's why we face the Qibla. For the Munafik and for the Kafir, the Qibla is from within the creation. It could be a football star, it could be an actress, it could be an actor, it could be a house, it could be a car, it could be anything. Their Qibla, their focus of attention, is not the Kaaba in Makkah. It's not for Ubudiyatillah. Every single form of worship, and this is another example that he gives, has some level of congregation. We congregate in the Masajid to worship Allah. We congregate in Mecca to do Hajj for Allah. We congregate in our bodies and in our routines in Ramadan for Allah. The whole world, or Ummah, is connected in Ramadan. The people of Nifaq and Kufr, they congregate in places of Shirk and Ma'asi. Congregation is an, is an aspect of ibadah which you cannot take away. You cannot take it away. People, they go to stadiums to worship. People, they go to nightclubs to worship. People, they go to malls to worship. Another example that he gives, rahimahullah, is that the Muslim, he gives his honor to Allah and his Nabi, and the Anbiya and the Rusul. But they give honor that deserves only to Allah, but to created men and women. Walking idols, talking objects of worship and deities. They believe in Rububiyya, some of them. So some munafiks and some people who are kuffar believe that there is one ilah but they worship their own desires. So they take intermediaries with Allah. So now at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they used to go to a statue and they used to worship that statue. Now it's a bit more different. They worship their desires to get closer to Allah. But the believer, his that desires are in accordance with Allah. And yakun Allah wa Rasul Habba ilayhi mimma siwahum. This is when you have halawa to iman, you have halawa to iman, and Allah and His Messenger, they are more beloved to you than your own desires. 
They have too much husn dhan, they have too much good thoughts about animate objects. And no husn dhan for Allah. They have good thoughts about animate objects, cars, materialistic things. But they don't divert these things to Allah. And that's what the believer does. They make their sins fair seeming. There's nothing wrong with it. I have a girlfriend, I have a boyfriend, we're both happy, I'm not harming her, she's not harming me. We're living close with each other. There's nothing wrong with it. Have some drugs, do some, listen to some music. There's nothing wrong with it. If Allah didn't want that, why did He create it? Allah has told us to do it. Allah doesn't tell you to do fahisha. You have made it fair seeming for yourself. And this is not what the Ummah goes through. When there are sins, there are sins. They give the sin its level. If I fall into it, khalas, I've fallen into it and I turn back to Allah. But the moment you try and justify it, and the moment we try and say that this is okay, or this is something the Sharia needs to change, stop being backwards, stop being so rigid, then you have fallen into the way that the Ahl al-Nifaq and Kufr have had their relationship with the people. And this is Shaykh al-Islam thing. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. And he concludes, he goes on to mention many points, but he concludes, he says, Why is shirk a dhulmun adheem? Allah says in Surah Al-Luqman, shirk is the greatest form of oppression. Why? Because when you divert worshipping, not to Allah, and you worship the dunya, then you are making dhulm upon Allah, because He is the one who deserves your worship, and you have directed this worship to somebody that didn't deserve it. You are making dhulm upon yourself because you are giving yourself enslavement to something that is not your master. And then the thing that you are giving worship to is not able to be your master. Three things. This is why dhulm, shirk is dhulm and adhim. Number one, you take away Allah's right and you give it to somebody else. Number two, you take your own right of being a slave and the master and you give it to somebody else. And then you make a slave a master. And this is how they're falling into following and worshipping the dunya. But some people will say, okay, I don't need to uh, worship Allah, I don't need to be a good Muslim, I'm just happy with my friends. 